Welcome back to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. If you remember from last week, we started working on a horse with some navicular issues and was primarily lame when going to his right. We'll pick right back up with the shoe application and reevaluation of how he's moving. Okay, we're going to use an aluminum shoe on him because we want this toe to wear out as rapidly as we can, as it can, just to help with this treatment process and this is the shoe that I believe we're going to use. It fits well to the back of the central sulcus and the breakover point is there. Remember the line that I drew? That's where we want that breakover. It doesn't really, once we've got the foot dressed and everything, that's not a whole lot that needs to be set back. The, the distance from the apex of the frog to this inside edge is about a quarter of an inch which is consistent with our normal uh, measurements. Okay, there's the line that we've drawn. It's about the same distance, well, an inch away. This is a size smaller shoe. Okay, and this is the fallacy, and this is the very thing that keeps a lot of farriers from individualizing each foot, is because this, so the tendency is, is to put the same size shoe on each foot, when in fact this foot is smaller, and because the, they wanted to the tendency is, is to, if you have a number one shoe or a knot shoe on that side, to make a knot. In order for this one to fit a bigger size, you have to push it forward. And then you destroy your pastern angle, so then you end up leaving a lot of heel. So that's the scenario that causes a lot of these horses to end up in this situation. So by using the size shoe that's fitted for this foot, we're able to find these ratios, balance them out, and suit this foot just as efficiently as we're able to suit that other one. So it's about a quarter of an inch from the inside edge. There's the breakover point right underneath the mark that I've drawn, ahead of the apex of the frog about an inch and an eighth. So in our instruction tape, it goes into all these details very specifically, but for the moment, I'm going to tell you how this pad functions in relationship to this shoe. You'll see a small line that's been embossed into the pad right here, and that's to a line which to fit that shoe too. The reason for that is, is that it helps to help that frog stay engaged in the back and encourage them to land heel first. If you'll notice that that raised area extends beyond the level of this shoe and behind it so that as the horse comes forward with his stride that'll be the first part of his foot to engage the ground. The reason for that is twofold. It helps to align the coffin joint and most importantly it helps to satisfy the, the function of proprioception. So the, the proprioceptors are part of those things that control the coordination of the horse. So you were serving two needs here, very specific needs by just in, by the shape and the design of this pad and the relationship that it has with the shoe. The breakover being adjusted with respect to P3 is going to help the horse get off the ground in a meaningful way so that the heel at least has a chance to get to the ground first. And if that happens, everything in the coffin joint is going to be at its maximum point of efficiency. So there's just some simple things about this pad shoe combination and the fact that it wears off rapidly will keep that break over at a at the very specific spot throughout the whole shoeing period so this horse should be just as athletically in, it, it should have just as much an athletic endeavor at the end of his shoeing period as he does in the early stages so eight weeks ten weeks is not a long time for a horse even if they have some issues where the shoe can wear away so there's the widest part of the foot. You can see right through the pad. There's the line that we've drawn for breakover. And now, with no, with, without any imagination, you can see that this distance here is much shorter now than this, by almost the same proportions that it was out of balance before we trimmed the foot and with the other shoe on. So those are the simple little things that you can do that make a big difference for a horse like this one and so many others. Simply keeping those, these ratios balanced from one shoeing to the next will end up preventing a lot of these lameness issues. So,
Okay, we're back. Now we're just gonna finish this off in a normal fashion. Round this off a little bit. Any amount the foot that's over the front, we're just gonna undercut it like this, about a 40 or 45 degree angle. We don't want to take it off like this, and we certainly don't want to take it off from here down to the shoe. Eventually, this wall is going to reorganize itself. If you look right here, you'll see how the wall is wanting to grow. Now that the forces are off of it that's causing it to be distorted and pulled away, it'll start growing right now down this way. And when that happens, we can probably get rid of the pad and uh, maybe go to a, a different uh, a steel shoe or something like that. But in any event, we want to maintain breakover and the ratios from the widest part of the foot each way from that direction. So these are the changes that are going to take place over a period of the next three to four shoeings. Well, we've got, uh, we've got a, a, a definite improvement in the way he's traveling, the way he's engaging the ground. And I think the, there's still a bit of a head bob there. It's certainly not worse, and if anything, it's just slightly better. And this is not uncommon with a long-term uh, lameness like this because there's some something irritating him in there that's really doesn't show up on it radiographs at least significantly so what we're going to do we're going we're going to uh, expect this horse to quit pointing in about a week's time and, and we'll try to get back with you in a later show with the progress on this horse uh, to give you some more updated information but uh, all in all our goals are to make those ratios of the bottom of his foot match and uh, get him to landing heel first and then let the healing take place. We're going to encourage them to use this horse a little bit, not to his highest level, but certainly enough to exercise and keep him in a big space where he can exercise at will. And that's going to help increase the circulation, continually keep that coffin joint in a proper position so that the healing can take place. And it's all as we're really doing is just setting this horse up to heal. And those ratios are so important to prevent lameness as well as to heal up the lamenesses that are, have occurred. So. It's good information. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you next week. We'll give you uh, some updated information from time to time. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to purchase a copy of this series or any of the shows, please call us at 719-372-7463. Thank you. principles and guidelines for hoof care are tools that farriers can use on a daily basis that are complementary to good conventional trimming and chewing practices. Natural Balance guidelines can aid farriers in evaluating and treating various types of feet, healthy and pathologic. The latest scientific and practical information that has evolved over the last 15 years, as well as sound practices revisited from the past, serve as the basis for natural balance of trimming and shoeing guidelines. At Equine Digit Support System, we are committed to providing horse owners and hoof care practitioners with products and information that promote soundness in horses through natural guidelines. We offer a wide variety of performance and therapeutic products that go hand in hand with the hoof care principles and practices of natural balance. The Natural Balance Hoof Trimming and Natural Balance Shoeing videos not only provide the most up-to-date and detailed instruction, but also include educational presentation sections that discuss basic anatomy and biomechanics of the foot. The various items in our Natural Balance and EDSS product lineup are of the highest quality and have been specifically developed throughout the years of research and practical experience. Please let us know how we can help serve you and the hoof care needs of your equine friends.